guys, I'm Kathleen Shannon. I'm a brand consultant for other creative entrepreneurs, just like myself, from all over the world. I want to tell you about how I created my dream job from right here in Oklahoma, with what started as a bit of a hobby, a blog about my life. It started five years ago, whenever I bought a house with my boyfriend and we wanted to remodel it. I wanted to document this on a blog. But if I wanted to photograph my outfits and maybe, maybe some photos of my cat, I would post those as well. I thought maybe only my mom would read it, maybe this blog of mine, but it turns out that strangers were really curious about what I had to say. I especially made a splash when I painted my entire hallway in nine inch wide black and white stripes. And because I do everything a bit bold and a lot off the beaten path, when my boyfriend and I decided to get married in my home, stripes and all, my brother, who is a Coney Island sideshow freak who drives <laughs> nails into his head and swallows swords and breathes fire for a living, he officiated the ceremony. <laughs> yeah. So to go with the quirky vibe of our wedding, I designed some wedding invitations to match. Um, I just wanted something a little bit different. And the wedding itself landed on Glamour Magazine's blog, and my brother went on to officiate another ceremony in Brooklyn that landed in the pages of Martha Stewart weddings. So let me say that again. My freak show brother is in a Martha Stewart magazine. I'm so jealous. But my wedding invitations started to make appearances on really big time blogs with huge readerships. And people like offbeat brides and grooms from all over the world started hiring me to design their wedding invitations too. So at this point, I was supporting myself enough to quit my 9 to 5 job with these wedding invitations, but I didn't really identify myself as a wedding invitation designer. I hadn't quite found this dream job yet. But just like the offbeat brides who were finding me through my blog, my tribe was finding me too. Other creative entrepreneurs like photographers, jewelry designers, fashion designers, other graphic designers, they were find finding me through my blog also, and they were hiring me. I continued to blog about all the aspects of my life, from what I was wearing to what I was eating. I even blogged about a month-long trek to Mount Everest in Nepal, day by day. I was also blogging about this adventure, this new adventure in freelancing. There was a lot of insecurities and struggles that came with working for myself, but there were also little victories too that I was celebrating. And just to give you guys some context, there are some really big deal bloggers out there. People making millions on ad networks and sponsorships. And then there are also really teeny tiny blogs that never make their way out of Dear Diary land. So, <laughs> me, I have about 6,000 people a day reading my blog. So I'm not quite a rock star blogger, but the readership that I have is really loyal and really engaged. So engaged, in fact, that I started getting heartfelt emails from all these other creatives asking me specific questions about how I do what I do. So I started a series called Freelance Matters, where I address topics like how to fire a client from hell to how I estimate and build my projects, just really specific stuff. At first, I was really afraid of giving away all my secrets. I was almost resentful, but I found that the more I talk about how I do what I do, the more other people wanted to hire me to do it for them. By openly sharing this knowledge, I was positioning myself as an expert. I kept thinking, isn't there like a freelancing and blogging for dummies book out there? <laughs> But it turns out that people really wanted to hear it from me. They were connecting with me and who I was. So, uh, so my sister quit her job as a creative director and joined forces with me. And we continued what I had created with Freelance Matters into our own platform where we were openly sharing content with our blog readers. We call this gifts of knowledge. Um, but at this point, blogging became such second nature to me that now I get to decide what content I want to charge for through stuff like e-courses and e-books. What else? <laughs> blogging may seem a bit like where narcissism meets voyeurism, but really it's about connecting. I've connected with so many online friends who are also oversharing for a living, and lately I've been traveling to meet with them offline too. So this might look like a photo of me partying poolside, but I'm actually networking with 20 other creative entrepreneurs who overshare and blog for a living. So, and this is in Palm Springs, California. It was a really good time, but I was making good contacts. So what started as a little blog has turned into a dream job in which I found both my tribe and my expertise. 
Blending the personal with the professional and sharing it all online has really allowed me to create my own story, which in turn has made my life more interesting, never boring, and always memorable. 